Pillar three, staying on the road, zero tolerance. Chapter seven, storms and detours. Up until 2016, when I was trying to change my financial patterns of struggle, my desired end destination was to have more than enough money to pay my bills. As long as I kept my focus on the feeling of financial abundance, I was heading toward my destination. But then I would receive an unexpected bill that I couldn't pay, a storm along the road to my destination. I would take that bill as a sign that what I was doing wasn't working and would feel despondent. I would see it as going backwards and it would trigger me. I would feel hopeless and that there was no point in even trying anymore. That would be me heading off road into the wildernessness, into the dark, rough terrain of where I didn't want to be, where the storm continued to rage. And the longer I wandered around in that wilderness, the more off course I would get. And there would come a time, and it doesn't take long, when I would get so far from the road that I would no longer be able to see it. And all I could see was the darkness and no sign of the road to my destination. Don't get out of the car. Knowing how to drive and having the GPS coordinates set to match the intended destination is only effective if we stay on the road. If every time we hit a storm or a detour, we pull over, get out of the car, and spend time in that storm or detour, as if that's all there is, we'll never reach our destination. It's important to recognize that it's natural to focus on the bad stuff. It's part of our survival system. So when the brain registers danger, it's designed to ignore everything else. You don't want to take your eyes off that bear because if you do, you may no longer be around to appreciate the pretty flowers. We inherited the genes that predispose us to give special attention to the negative aspects of our environments that could be harmful to us. Timothy J. Bono, PhD. When we encounter storms along the road, the storm is all we can see at that time. It looks like the whole world is in a storm since we can't see beyond it from where we are. Our natural tendency is to assume that we won't ever reach our destination, and so we buy into the experience of the storm being all there is. In other words, when we encounter challenges to what we want along the way, we automatically buy into them, and depending on our own particular self-image and worldview from childhood references, we react accordingly. For example, Jenny is practicing the exercise for controlling her brain chemistry. She's changed her negative childhood memories to positive and empowering ones and is practicing those new memories and keeping her focus on what she wants. What she wants is more money, since she's currently only just scraping by. So she's on the road, focusing on her goals, and she's checked that the coordinates in her GPS, her childhood memories, match the destination of having more than enough. And then a storm hits. She receives an unexpected bill that means she has to go into overdraft or borrow money. Naturally, this triggers her. She was doing so well. She was focusing on her destination and making sure her GPS matched that destination. Now, however, she's gone backwards. Or has she? It's a matter of perception and the meaning we automatically assign to what we experience. Jenny will naturally feel emotionally triggered at first, but it's what she chooses to do from there that will determine her results. Option one. If, like most of us, Jenny stays in that triggered state and buys into the feeling of, it's not working, why does this always happen to me, nothing's changed, and other similar thoughts, that's like pulling over, getting out of the car, and fully focusing on being in that storm. How bad it is, how inconvenient it is, and how much it's keeping her from her end destination. As Jenny's brain continues to fire neurons in those particular patterns, negative thoughts, 
her limbic system is, in real time, pumping more and more stress chemicals into her brain and body. And as those stress chemicals continue to impact her brain and body, part of that response is blood draining from the part of her brain she needs for cognitive thinking. This results in a vicious circle of negative thoughts and negative feelings, which means she's unable to find solutions or see options and opportunities, and so she stays stuck in that storm. Of course, it's practically impossible to keep your focus on the lovely end destination when you're dealing with the bear in front of you. Option two. If Jenny can recognize the storm as just a storm along the way to her end destination, she will be able to keep moving forward through it instead of getting out and pitching a tent. She may have to slow down a bit, visibility may deteriorate, she may feel frightened, but she'll be able to keep reminding herself that it's only a storm on her journey, not an alternative end destination. And if the storm is particularly scary, she may put on the radio, music, or an uplifting audiobook, or call a friend who will talk her through the storm. But she will keep moving toward her desired destination. In other words, when she sees that unexpected bill, and when she realizes the implications of it, she'll be able to remind herself that it doesn't mean anything other than the meaning she gives it. She can choose to see it as a storm along the road, and she can choose to not buy into it. She can remind herself to keep her focus on her end destination, financial freedom, and maintain control of her vehicle. Do whatever it takes to keep her focus on what feels good, to keep the stress chemicals down, the feel-good chemicals high, and her cognitive thinking online. She can check those GPS coordinates, play the new childhood memories with all their associated good feelings to make sure they're all in alignment with that end destination and change any that aren't. And as she does this, she keeps control of her vehicle and stays on the road. Her prefrontal cortex stays online, which means she has full access to her cognitive thinking and is able to think clearly, problem solve, and see opportunities she couldn't have seen while triggered. Once I got that far off the road and lost in the wilderness of negative emotions, it would be almost impossible to find my way back to the road again. Because now, surrounded by the darkness with no sign of a road, the doubts would kick in. What road? There is no road. And so I would continue to wander around lost in that darkness. If, on the other hand, I was applying zero tolerance, which means having no tolerance for any negative thought or feeling, no matter how small or apparently harmless, I'd be able to catch that detour before I got too far from the road. When the storm hit, the unexpected bill turned up or I lost income or didn't get the job I'd hoped for, I'd remind myself that it's just a storm and that as long as I stay on the road and keep facing the direction of my destination, I'll eventually come out of that storm. If I did end up facing a different direction and heading into the wilderness, as soon as I was aware of it, I would turn around and get back on the road, and it would be much easier and quicker because I wouldn't be that far from it. An example from a client. In one of our daily group sessions, Susan an 18-year-old, shared her struggles with anxiety, her fear of failing exams and being rejected by medical school. May 18th, 2020. I've been feeling anxiety regarding an application outcome that's coming out this week. I can't seem to change memories of the feeling I have of opening an email regarding previous application outcomes. The anxiety is so strong that it's really hard. May 21st, 2020. I got rejected from medical school yesterday, yet again. Others around me keep getting more and more medical school offers, and I keep getting rejected. I have feelings of being left out. 
We helped Susan deal with a range of challenges, including feeling inadequate. We guided her through changing plenty of negative childhood memories and using the due justice technique, chapter 15, the allowing technique, chapter 17, and touchstones, chapter 18. Over time, as she changed her childhood memories, practiced the new ones, and continued to practice the beginner's exercise from chapter 2, her anxiety reduced, she started thinking differently, and was able to achieve two A's and an A star, exceeding the required three A score on her final exams, allowing her to apply to medical school despite her original lack of confidence in herself. Email on February 1st, 2021. Odile, I'm a medical student. I got into one of my universities. However, during February and March, despite getting into one of the universities on her list, she realized she had a powerful fear of being rejected by her first choice university and ending up at one that didn't appeal to her. We changed more childhood memories and once again used the allowing technique and touchstones. Email on March 31st, 2021. Oh, deal, you will not believe it. I'm a medical student, part two. Ah, I am so grateful. I just found out that I got into my top choice university. I'm crying, shaking, and I'm so grateful for you. Recap. The brain has a negative bias. We're designed to focus on the danger for survival. Negative thoughts trigger stress chemicals, causing negative emotions, which in turn trigger more negative thoughts, and so the negative cycle is perpetuated. Since stressed chemicals are stronger than feel-good chemicals, the earlier you change your focus, or switch off the stress chemical tap and switch on the feel-good chemical tap, the easier it will be to change your emotional state. It's not always easy. When things look like they're not going to work out, or you can't see how you'll get to where you want to be from where you currently are, it's not always easy to choose your focus. Because unfortunately, it's easier to feel bad than to feel good.